Today on BRS TV, we're going to upgrade two RODI systems from base models to the more feature-rich Plus series. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of BRS TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week, we're going to tell you what's included with the Plus upgrade kits, what they do, how they represent value to you as a reefer, show installation steps, and finish with a few related tips on what to do if your system is producing high TDS. The plus kit includes a TDS meter, pressure gauge, and flush kit. The TDS meter will measure the total dissolved solids, which is a relative measure of water purity coming out of your RO system, as well as your DI resin, which is ultimately the water you're using. To be honest, this is something that every reefer out there should own, because what good is owning an RO system if you have no idea how it's working? The pressure gauge measures water pressure entering the RO membrane, which should ideally be around 50 PSI. We measure pressure here because the membrane requires high pressure to operate properly. As the pressure drops below 50 PSI, you'll likely see decreasing performance, which means lower quality, high TDS water coming out of your membrane and significantly slower water production. The flush kit is basically a bypass for your flow restrictor on your membrane. This will drastically increase the flow over the surface of the membrane and flush deposits off, which can hurt longevity, water quality, and water production from the membrane. We suggest opening it for a few minutes a couple times a month, or even better, a few minutes before and after every major use. Before starting the insulation, turn the water supply to the system off and throw down a towel because you're likely to spill a bit of water during the install. Flush kit installation is as easy as pushing in the push connect collets on the flow restrictor, removing it, and then replacing it with a new flush kit. It does matter which direction you install it, so make absolutely sure the flow arrow is pointed away from the membrane. In normal operation, the valve should be closed like this, which forces the water through the restrictor to create the required pressure in the membrane. When you want to flush the membrane, open the valve for a few minutes, which bypasses the internal restrictor and increases flow over the membrane and flushes the deposits off. The pressure gauge is even easier to install. Locate the feed line on your RO membrane, which is on the cap side of the housing, and only has a single line entering it. If this is a BRS system, it will likely be red. Just clip this line and push both ends in the T on your pressure gauge. Once you get the system back up and running, you'll be able to easily monitor the water pressure on your system, since almost every major issue you can experience with an RO system is somehow related to pressure. This is an invaluable monitoring and troubleshooting tool. If you own a four-stage value system, the first step is mounting the monitor. Use the included Velcro stickers to mount it somewhere easy to see and insert the probes into the push connect tees. One probe is labeled in and the other out. On the back of your system, locate the line feeding the in of your DI canister. Clip that line and insert each end into the T labeled in. Now locate the line coming out of your DI. Clip it and insert each end into the T labeled out. Once that's done, bundle up the excess wire and secure it. Installed like this, you're going to be able to measure the TDS or water quality coming out of your RO membrane, which should likely be somewhere between 1 and 15, depending on your city's water quality. Coming out of the DI, it should always be zero TDS. There's a little switch on the front to switch back and forth between probes. On the universal system, which has a double DI, the install will be basically the same, except for it has three probes. You're going to install one on the end of the first DI, one in between both of them, and one on the end. This is going to allow you to measure the RO system performance, your first DI, as well as the product water. Most people are going to change that first DI cartridge once it's depleted, so you always have a second DI cartridge that's fully charged in line with your system. Once everything's installed, check for leaks and you're done. We do have a couple tips related to your new equipment, and if you find your RO membranes emitting higher TDS water than it should. The first and most common concern is related to something known as TDS creep. If you just turn your system on, the TDS will always be high. Just give it a few minutes and it will stabilize at a normal operating level. Second two are related to water pressure. It's super common for reefers to forget their flush valve open, so be sure to check for that if you have an issue with high TDS or low flow. The next most common cause of low pressure is the sediment filters clogged with sediment, which is going to reduce pressure to the whole system. If your pressure gauge is reading abnormally low, it's almost certainly related to clogged pre-filters and you should change them. Next one is your membrane just isn't seated correctly on this seal. Screw off the cap, remove the membrane, and reinsert it, which should solve this problem. When you do this, if you notice a slimy biofilm all over your membrane, something in your water supply caused a pretty rare but possible bacterial bloom and you likely need to sanitize the system with a bleach solution and replace all of the filters. 
Some of you are probably wondering why you don't install the TDS probe before the RO system and test your home's TDS. Well, you can do that. However, in most cities, your home's water supply doesn't change a whole lot over time. So we suggest installing it there temporarily to find out what your home's TDS is and then installing it as we suggested in the video. We've been consistently releasing videos every week since about 2008 and we aren't stopping now. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on next week's. If you can't wait, here are a few from our library on how to maximize the life of your DI resin, selecting the right sediment filter and installing the 150 gallon per day upgrade kit. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.